welcome to the show. As always, I'm Fran Excel Mindset Coach, and I am helping you find your very own pair of positive pants so you can get out of your own way and live a life you really love. So today's big topic, should you be positive all the time? Now, for someone that talks about finding your positive pants, this is quite a big thing because the answer may surprise you. So the power of positivity. When you hear people saying, just think positive, you kind of want to give them a little bit of a punch on the nose, right? Because at the time that people tend to say this to you, you're feeling anything but. You want to feel positive day to day. You just want to feel more positivity throughout life because your go-to reaction is negative. You want to feel positive and you want to think positive, but you just can't seem to. Negativity is just ingrained into your psyche. Then you beat yourself up when you feel like you're not doing positivity right. Sound familiar? So as a mindset coach and former you're on a bad day, I talk about helping people find their positive paths a lot because I genuinely believe it is so, so important. So much so I named my podcast after it. Um, I help people pull them up, keep them up, all that sort of jazz. But I get asked a lot if I feel 100% positive 100% of the time. The answer is a giant, hell no! Life throws the proverbial at me all the time and it throws me out of whack just like it does everybody else but here's the thing i do know how to get myself out of it pronto and i ask myself the right questions to work out where it's coming from and if it's helpful so is it even actually possible to be positive all the time in a way yes it is possible but is it sustainable when you're having to force it or deny yourself other feelings no is it realistic no is it healthy? No. So when you're retraining your brain for positivity, you, to become a more positive person, you literally have to retrain and rewire your brain for different thinking and create new neural pathways to make that your go-to, to make positivity a go-to. It's through a process called neuroplasticity. It is literally retraining and rewiring your brain. Sound easy peasy? Thought not. But when you know how, it is easy. It just takes time. It's also really blooming cool that we have the power to do that. Like genuinely, it's what I did to myself. So I am living proof. So as humans, we are wired for the negative. You can absolutely become a more positive person if you choose that that's what you actually want to do. But it really doesn't mean that you will be that way 100% of the time. It's just not realistic. There will always be that initial reaction to something that isn't always how you'd want to react or choose to react an hour later after digesting what's actually happened. Just ask my husband about that. <laughs> the thing is, it's, it, it's really important is, is being able to get yourself out of a negative space when you acknowledge you don't want to be in it. OK, does that make sense to everybody? So anyone for a pity party? Here's the next bit. Sometimes we do want to throw ourselves a little pity party stay in our PJs to roll into the duvet and eat a pint or two of Ben and Jerry's. Do I think it's wise or helpful? No. <laughs> Do I acknowledge sometimes that the heart just wants what it wants? Yes. But it is your choice. When it's a problem is when you don't know your way out when you want to get out. So sometimes that little pity party is actually that rest that our body had been desperately telling us that we needed. What's important is to build your resilience, to have tools like reframing in your back pocket to help you choose to look at a situation differently when you don't want to be negative. That is what is important. So allow yourself to feel what you feel. Sometimes I do feel, like something I do feel really strongly about is allowing ourselves to feel negative emotions when we want or need to. So sometimes awful things happen in life and it's really important not to suppress those emotions when they do come up. But there will come a point where you get to make a choice to continue to feel that way or feel another way. At the end of the day, I firmly believe I know that we have a choice in how we feel and how we think. So the thing is, is we can't beat ourselves up 
when we don't feel it because that's got the opposite effect and this is what I used to do at the start of my journey when I was trying to teach people how to be more positive in their day-to-day -day lives and I was positive a lot of the time but when I wasn't feeling that way I used to really beat myself up for it and that's just damaging because then it, you get into this loop of negativity and you can't stop because you're trying so hard you're like no I'm supposed to be positive damn it I'm supposed to be positive and then when you're not feeling that way you start all the other feelings start to come up who am I to be teaching other people how to be more positive and how to have self-belief and confidence and all of these things how do I do that when I don't feel that so we start to think that there's something wrong with us and that massively knocks our confidence and self-esteem so when you what you do need to do is get curious as to why you don't feel the way you want to. So if life has thrown the proverbial at you and it's making you procrastinate massively about something, is there something bigger at play there? You know, just really start to think. And you've got my procrastination buster and I'll put a link to uh, a link below so you can download that because that's a, such a helpful tool because it gives you the top reasons that people procrastinate top tips to get through it and also a procrastination buster for the extra sticky moments and actual sort of self coaching sheet to go through for all those things and actually start getting stuff done. So that's a really important tool. But here's the next thing. Negativity can be really helpful. Okay, shock horror. Negative emotions can also sometimes be helpful to us. So it can help us notice when we're out of balance with our values. And when we're doing something that's out of alignment with who we who we are, who we want to be. If you want to find out more about values, I've got a blog on that um, and actually takes you through the exercise. So it's um, www.franexcel.com, excel with two L's, forward slash values. And you can go through that exercise. It gives you that, that when they're out of balance, it gives you that feeling, you know, enough is enough. If you're trying to force positivity, it may feel like you're not really dealing with, it may mean that you're not really dealing with the underlying issue and that's not good. So what are your negative thoughts and feelings actually telling you? Are you actually heading for burnout and need to take some time for yourself? Are you creating a business based on what you think you should do rather than what you want to do? So do I believe you must have a positive foundation in place if you want to start a business or make any huge life change? Yes. Absolutely, 100%. Yes, I couldn't believe that more. And it's certainly what I found to be true as well. You'll be pushing water uphill otherwise. You will get all the mindset gremlins. You will deal with procrastination, overwhelm, self doubt, comparisonitis, imposter syndrome. All of that happens when you're in a negative headspace. When you learn the tools and techniques that I teach to help you become more positive and build the resilience and the reframing and all the other tools that I use, those things just really don't happen anywhere near as much as they did. You may have a little bubble up from time to time, but you know how to get out of it. It's powerful stuff. So does this mean you should be 100% positive 100% of the time? Absolutely freaking not. You need to listen to those negative emotions and understand what they're telling you. Get really curious. Okay, about why you're feeling that way. Use the tools that I've mentioned. I've got blogs on all of those um, and I've got some podcast episodes on them as well. Um, and get yourself back on track. If you feel that you're a negative person and you don't want to be, you can absolutely find your positive pants, pull them up and keep them up. I wouldn't keep talking about it and back down about it if you couldn't, but don't deny yourself the negative when it can be helpful. Just acknowledge that. And next time you're beating yourself up, for not being, you know, Pollyanna, then think about that. Don't try and be a Stepford wife and force positivity. That's not how this stuff works. It can actually make you focus more on the negative even more and create more negatives by doing that. So understand the tools I've given you. So resilience, reframing. Um, I've done a podcast on, on how to get yourself out of a bad mood. All these different things. Understand how much control you have understand how much how your negative emotions can help you and then you make your choice what do I want to feel who do I want to be you have so much more control over your thoughts and your reality than you give yourself credit for you really do so that is a, a fast whistle stop tour on what I think about whether you should or should not be positive 
So when you're talking about reframing, that's when you're looking at something and you ask yourself, how can I look at this a different way? How could I learn from this? How could this be a positive? Okay, stuff's going to happen. The proverbial is going to hit the fan. It, it's life, you know. You can't expect it to be perfect all the time. That's just the way it is. But when you have in your armory, you get out of it so much quicker. It's things like I've spoken before about when you're on your daily commute or if you're working with in a job that you really, really can't stand. It can be really tough when all you're focusing on is these negative things. They can tell you, you know, one of the reasons, a lot of the reasons actually that we're unhappy in corporate jobs is because they're out of alignment with our values. So do that exercise because it's a really, really important one. When you know what your top three core values are, you can make decisions quicker. You can make better decisions based on that. So for me, it's freedom, exactly what I'm creating, happiness, and authenticity. So those three things, you can see how they don't 100% fit in a corporate job. You can get by, but also when you understand that you're feeling a certain way because your values are out of line, then it, it makes it easier because I'm always saying awareness is the key to everything. When you have that awareness and you understand how you're feeling and why you're feeling that way, it makes it A, a lot easier to deal with, but B, a lot easier to change. I adore having these tools in my toolkit. It is one of the, you know, the best things ever because anyone that's known me for years knows that I was very much the opposite. I could find a negative in a positive. I mean, it was ridiculous. I could find somebody, somebody, I wanted to name my first book, When Life Gives You Avocados and You're Allergic. That whole feeling of like, ugh, giving me these really healthy avocados that everybody else loves, but I'm allergic. So who do you think you are to give me those? You know, I would have done that. But this just shows you how powerful this stuff is and how much you can change your mindset around. So I hope that was really useful for you guys. And until next week, have a really, really good time. Find your positive pants. And I'll see you on Monday.